This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Dolores was late. That was unlike her, and Marjorie Chinnick was concerned. Marjorie and Dolores Lynch met every Sunday morning in the parking lot of Grace Episcopal, a small granite church in South Louisville. Usually Marjorie arrived first and waited for Dolores' car to come down the long drive to the back of the church. Dolores would park beside her and they would go inside, where Dolores always went to the restroom before they entered the sanctuary. After the thirty-minute service, they would join other church members in the parish hall for coffee, a time Dolores particularly enjoyed. Unlike Marjorie, Dolores was gregarious and often made herself the center of attention at these gatherings. Afterward, she and Marjorie would walk to their cars and chat until Dolores said, Well, I must go. Janie will have our donuts. Dolores lived in a country house seventeen miles from the church, and during the three years she and Marjorie had been attending church together, her daughter Janie had been a student at the University of Louisville School of Dentistry, training for her third career. Janie had a student apartment at the downtown campus, but she often spent weekends at home. On those days, while her mother was at church, she would drive to Erler's Dairy Store in Prospect and buy yeast donuts, only two, and have them ready with coffee when her mother got home. When Janie wasn't home weekends, she often drove out to spend Sunday mornings with her mother, stopping for the donuts on the way. Later, Dolores and Janie would drive back to Louisville to the house of Hunan for the Sunday lunch special. For Dolores, the day provided a satisfying weekly ritual. She craved ritual. Indeed, it was the reason she belonged to Grace Episcopal. When the Episcopal Church adopted a new prayer book, Grace defied the diocese and refused to accept it, clinging to the more ritualistic liturgy of the 1928 prayer book, a defiance that eventually would cause Grace Episcopal to disaffiliate itself from the diocese. Grace was the first church Dolores attended regularly after moving to Louisville in 1967, but she left it in 1969 because she didn't like the priest. He looked greasy, she complained and she felt dirty after shaking his hand. That was something that Dolores, with her obsession for cleanliness, couldn't abide. She attended several churches before settling at St. James Episcopal in Pee Wee Valley, a tiny town northeast of Louisville, much closer to her home. But eventually she would leave that church also, in bitterness. Made a rebel by her conservatism, she had returned to Grace five years earlier in 1979, because of the maverick stand the church took on the prayer book issue. The greasy priest had departed, and she now felt comfortable at Grace. Marjorie Chinnock met Dolores in 1967, when she originally came to Grace. At first, Marjorie didn't understand why Dolores sought her friendship. Marjorie was reserved, almost withdrawn, and she was far from being on the same financial footing as Dolores the wife of a top General Electric executive. Dolores lived then on stock dividends and a monthly allowance from her husband in an expensive home on the grounds of a prestigious country club. Marjorie, a divorced mother of grown children, lived in a modest apartment in an older section of Louisville and worked at a Kroger supermarket. This is strange, Marjorie told herself at the beginning of the relationship. Why does she seek me out? I'm a working person. She belongs in a high echelon. Doesn't she know who she is? But after careful consideration, she began to think, maybe I'm the snob, and accepted Dolores' friendship without question. After Dolores left Grace Episcopal, the two friends gradually drifted apart, and Marjorie had been surprised three years earlier to get a call from Dolores. Disenchanted, Marjorie had left the church altogether in 1970, and Dolores had never questioned why until she called that Sunday afternoon. You were always such a devout Episcopalian, Dolores said. Why don't you come back? Meet me in the parking lot next Sunday. Marjorie did, and their Sunday mornings became ritual. But on this morning, the fourth Sunday of July 1984, Dolores was late.